Okay, let's present a relatively simple problem that will lead us to nonlinear oscillations. Consider two springs attached to a mass between them, both springs with the same elastic constant. Assume that we place them such that they are at their equilibrium. So the length of the springs is their equilibrium length. There is no gravity involved here. We move the mass slightly in the perpendicular direction, making a small angle theta, and let go. Due to symmetry, the mass will oscillate in this axis. So, we have a one-dimensional problem. I want to find the effective force acting on the mass. First, let's think about the forces acting on the mass and focus on the horizontal axis. The force of the spring is due to the elongation, which is the extension of the spring with respect to its equilibrium length. If we call L0 the equilibrium length and L the extended length, the force of the spring is minus KL minus L0. To project in the x and y axis, we write minus KL minus L0 times the sine of theta. This is the force from each spring, because both will be extended, stretched, forces from both springs point in the same direction. So the total x-axis force is minus 2kl minus l0 sine of theta. Forces on the y-axis cancel out. But this force on the x-axis is written in terms of the stretched length and the angle theta, both of which change in time, and both of which are related. Let's write the force in terms of just one of these variables. To do that, I'll use trigonometry to write the, same, the sine of theta as the position x over l, and I can write l as the square root of l0 squared plus x squared. This way, I have the force written only in terms of x. This is not a very simple expression, though. Let's assume that the oscillations are small, and then this means that x over l0 square is small. Let's suspend this square root in series of Taylor. Remember that for a series of Taylor expansion, we approximate the function as the polynomial that we obtain by successive derivatives. So 1 over the square root of 1 plus a square for a very small can be approximated by 1 minus 1 half of a square plus 3 over 8 of a to the fourth dot dot dot. This back into the force of the springs. This leaves us with this expression for the force on the mass. Look that the lowest term is to the power of 3. If we neglect high order terms, we get with f of x approximately equal to minus k over l0 square times x to the cube. This is a clearly nonlinear force. This is not the simple case of Hooke's law. This simple system with only two springs attached to one mass, even, even for a more oscillations, is an example of nonlinear dynamics. We can find the potential related to this force. Using nabla of u equal to negative the force, we integrate to get the potential.
and it has a dependence of x to the power of 4. This is not a parabolic potential anymore. We can plot the force as a function of the position and the potential as a function of the position. Remember that in the case of Hooke's law, we had a potential in terms of x squared. That was a parabola, but not here. This is still a symmetric potential, though. The same happens for positive x as for negative x. But we can't use the quadratic approximation for the potential. We can also integrate, the, integrate this differential equation to find the velocity of the particle as a function of the position. And now we can plot the velocity as a function of the position. So something we can do now is to assume that before we start the motion, the springs are already stretched. They are not in their equilibrium position. Then we repeat. We move slightly the mass from its equilibrium and let go. But this will solve in the next video. May the science be with you.